driving out from a World Cup, World Cup event or a Olympic event or if I'm coming from a health problem in the city or a sewage problem. So don't ever in your life uh, do the World Cup and the Olympics at the same time. You know, the, the other day I had a meeting with uh, Sebastian Coe. He was the president, the chair of the organizing committee in London. And uh, he remembered me saying, right after we won the bid, the Olympic bid, I went to London and, and, and Mr. Coe said to me, uh, I mean, when you get the games, you become so popular, then your popularity goes down, deep down. When you're like two years from the games, you're going to be feeling like, what the hell in the world have I done to get these games to my city? So this is the moment I'm leaving, going through. Uh, so I mean, it's, it's great to be here. I really appreciate being invited by McKinsey to be speaking here. I want to welcome you all uh, to Rio. I mean, th the first point I, I want to make here, because uh, Brazil, uh, I'm going to speak about Rio, but I, I want to speak a little bit uh, before about Brazil. Uh, if you look at Brazil like three, four years ago, two years ago, it was like everybody was so excited about Brazil. I mean, now the country of the future has really got it into its future. And uh, now it's like, you know, these guys, they missed the opportunity. They're doing everything wrong now. So I would, I, I would not go uh, to the past to do what we said, what we were saying about Brazil two, three years ago, and I would not accept uh, what people are saying now. I mean, I think when you talk about a country like Brazil, especially when you talk about cities uh, like Rio in a country like Brazil, what we need to do is let's compare Brazil with Brazil, let's compare Rio with Rio. Uh, the country is much, much better than it was 20, 30 years ago. I mean, 30 years ago, we were not a democracy. Uh, institutions were not as strong as they were, as they are today. Uh, 30 years ago, uh, we had 40 million people more in poverty than what we have today. So the country has achieved a lot. And the same goes to the city of Rio. I mean, the same goes to probably Sao Paulo, but I want to speak about the best city, which is Rio. Uh, but the same, the same comes to Rio. And I think one of the things, uh, there, there were some kind words when I was presented here, uh, but I think uh, what we are doing here in Rio and comparing always Rio to Rio, actually one of the reasons we won uh, the Olympic Games, the Olympic bid and we beat Chicago, I mean Obama's uh, hometown, uh, we beat uh, Madrid and we beat Tokyo. Obviously, now the guys from the AOC, they're going to go to Tokyo because they, after being a tropical country with, with all our warmth and, and being late for the games, they want to go to something that's already ready. It's being built in Tokyo. But when we built them, uh, our, our greatest asset to win the bid was the problems that Rio used to face. Four days to, to the World Cup, 26 months until the Olympics. So uh, how, how do we see uh, the games, how, how we, we use in these big events, especially the games. I mean, we see that as, that as an opportunity, I mean, for us to make things uh, that would not uh, have been done if it was not for uh, the Olympics or the games or these big events. There is a possibility of visibility to the city, uh, to the country. I think Brazil missed that opportunity for the World Cup. I mean, the planning. Uh, the, the, we, we cannot think, never think about uh, Olympic Games, World Cup as sport events. They are geopolitical decisions. I mean, if you look at uh, when this, when they, uh, only when they go to Europe or the US, I mean, they're just staying in, uh, in the place they are, always are. But when they go, when they made the, the, the games in, in Korea, in Seoul, it was the, tame, it was the time of uh, Asian countries. When they did the games in Barcelona, it was the time where European Union showed that they could get a, a, a developing country inside of the European continent and, you know, make it be in the developed country. So, I mean, I think I see the, the Olympic Games, the decision of bringing the Olympic Games to Rio as a geopolitical decision. And what we are mostly doing, I mean, there are some commandment, commandments that we've been following 
since we, we got the games. I mean, first thing is the games must serve the city. We said invest in people and change the culture of the country because of this great opportunity. And the two last things uh, that we show here, optimize private investments and facilitate business, invest in city brand. It's the point I want to make here today. I mean, uh, you are not going to believe, but in, in the history of the Olympic Games, we never had so much private money as Rio is bringing to the Games. I mean, this, this is our budget for the Olympic Games. First part, seven billion reais, it's uh, the organizing committee budget. It's completely private, 100% private money. And when, when, I, when we show these figures to Brazilian people, they just don't believe, especially because of the World Cup. But anyway, when we talk uh, about this middle figure here, this middle number, 5.6 billion, we're talking about all the venues that we are building. So. Uh, th these, are th these are the figures for uh, things that we would never build if it was not because of the Olympics. So it's 5.6 billion reais, and 75% of that, uh, it's private money. I mean, for the first time in the Olympic Games, uh, we're doing uh, uh, the Olympic Park with private money. The Olympic Village is completely pri private money. Uh, the golf course is private money. And I, I don't have to tell you that golf is not a very... Uh, popular sport uh, in Brazil. And this, this 24 billion reais budget, 43% uh, of it, uh, it's private. And we're talking here about legacy. I mean, we're talking about things that are going to be left to the city, uh, that the games were a good excuse uh, to get things done in this uh, legacy perspective here. And how, do, how did we did that? How, how did we get that done? I mean, how, how did it work? Uh, mainly with PPPs, mainly with concessions, but mainly with PPPs. So we have today uh, what we call Marvelous Port, is the renovation of the port area. I mean, I don't know if there's anyone from Boston here, but I, I heard that uh, in Boston it took like 15 years to get it ready. So in Rio, we're doing that in five years with only private money. It's a 7.6 billion reais uh, PPP with an investment of 4.1 billion reais, only private money. As I said, the Olympic Park, uh, it's a contract of 1.4 billion. Uh, Transolimpica, which is a BRT that we are building, uh, it's also a contract of 1.6 B of investment, but with uh, 840 million reais. There's a light rail vehicle uh, in, in center downtown Rio with 1.2 billion. There's sanitation and waste management all being done uh, with private money. So uh, wh what is the point I want to make here? I know that I don't have uh, much minutes left. I mean, if Brazil is in, a best, in its best economic shape, or if it is not in its best economic shape, uh, the point I want to make is that it doesn't really matter. Why? Because we could get all this money because we uh, are in a country, and especially we are in a city, that believes that the most important achievement of uh, Seoul was that this country has become with strong institutions. So if the economic moment is it's, it's good, it's a perfect one, better. But if it is not, I mean, the institutions are strong, so the private investor can believe in what is going to be done here. So uh, and what we try to do in the city, and I think that's one of the main reasons we got things done, is that we built a strategic plan. We increased a lot our capability of investments. Uh, and, and doing that with uh, responsible fiscal uh, manage. And uh, we tried something that's completely new for Brazil. I mean, we have 120,000 employees, and they all work with meritocracy. I mean, if, if they achieve their, their target, their goal by the end of the year, they can get another salary or two uh, more salaries. And let me say something here. Uh, you know that Brazil has got from Standard & Poor's uh, a lower, that's a word, I think that's the right word to say, on its investment grade. For the first time in uh, Standard & Poor's history, uh, there is a sub subnational uh, government, level of government has an investment grade uh, 
uh, bigger than the country. So the investment grade of the city of Rio, we have investment grade on Moods, Stan and Poor's, and Fitch. So for the first time, our investment grade is higher than central government investment grades. Uh, so that made possible to the city to invest a lot, to make, bring private investment, and to get things done. So by the end of the day, the message I want to leave here is that uh, there's a lot that can be done uh, with private money. I mean, there's, there's a, a bunch of issues and problems that we face in everyday life of cities uh, that can uh, be dealt with, uh, with private money, with PPPs, as we're doing here. And I think there are some good examples uh, in the city of Rio uh, of, of private money being vast and, and giving solution and bringing solution, some original solutions to problems of the, of the, of the people. So thank you very much. I'm here open uh, to the debate. Thank you very much.